people welcome back to my youtube it is your girl honey welcome back people welcome back those of you who are new here welcome to my channel my name is honey and i am a british astrologer and we are completing the saturn through the houses series we are going to be talking about saturn in the third house today there's going to be saturn in gemini saturn in the third house saturn return and saturn transit through the third house so i will be putting timestamps in this video where you guys can skip to the parts that are going to be most relevant or important to yourself okay so let's talk a little bit about saturn saturn is your rules regulations restrictions responsibilities limitations fear it represents our sense of authority or the authority within our lives. The third house is the house of communication, how you process information, where you generate your ideas, your siblings, your local environment, communities, locally commuting, um, cars, siblings, cousins, your neighborhood. It's just your close environment. Let's start off by talking about Saturn in here natally, okay? And this will probably be relatable to those of you who also have Saturn in Gemini. Whenever I see Saturn in the third house, um, I want you guys to really look back on your relationship with your family, particularly the relationship with your siblings, but also the, the third house is the second, third and fourth house pretty much relate to our relationship with our families. Look to see how you were communicating. One of the things that I noticed about Saturn being here is that you guys may have had some sort of communication issues. And this may have been more of an issue as a young child because some people grow out of it. Some people still deal with these communication issues. And we need to look at the condition of your Gemini, so where your Gemini is placed, um, if you have any planets placed in Gemini, the condition of your Mercury, what aspects you have to your Mercury as well, because that will also give us more of an indication surrounding how you are communicating and also what the relationship is like alongside your siblings. But let's start by talking about how you were raised and the siblings. Saturn being here can show us that you may have been raised by a sibling. Hear me out. You can have parents that raise you, but maybe your parents were always at work. You know, maybe your, maybe your older sibling had to step up and look after you growing up. And that can be looked at as a second parent. That sibling can be looked at as someone who I go to for advice. And again, depending on how Saturn is aspected, sometimes we can find that this sibling can feel like, you may feel like this sibling crosses a boundary a little bit too much. It's like an area where you want to take charge of. You want to be responsible. You want to be the adult. But this sibling's always in your business. This sibling's always telling you how to adult. And sometimes we can see clashes. Clashes that happen from early. And Saturn being here can show a sibling that has very strong Capricorn energy, um, Saturnian energy, 10th house energy. There's just quite a lot of heavy energy that comes from siblings. <laughs> We can also see a relationship with a sibling where you may feel very distant from them. It's like um, there's not much of a bond there or not much, I don't want to say love, the love could be there, but it just may not feel close. There may be a coldness between you and that sibling. And the good thing is, um, is that the older you get, because Saturn is also about old age and maturity, but the older you get, the relationship tends to grow and get better and um, a lot of my clients have said to me you know when me and my siblings were younger we hated each other we hated each other but now we're in our 30s and 40s and we really got on, get on we're really close um, and we have a really good time in terms of communication it can be very challenging having sat in place here because there's usually quite a lot going on with you having a hard time being able to communicate effectively. Some people deal with speech impairments. Some people deal with, uh, I want to say autism, but that also depends on what's happening with the 12th house and also the 6th house. Um, I don't want to say autism, but what I will say is, you know, some people growing up may have experienced being selectively mute, you know, or may have experienced, you know, not being able to communicate so easily. 
this is where we see children who deal with dyslexia you know struggling to read and write and, and noticing that wow my classmates my peers they're able to read at a particular level or write at a particular level and i can't get onto that level sometimes you can feel that there are a lot of restrictions um, or blockages that stop you from developing at the same pace as everybody else and this is the thing it's it's really frustrating because I don't look at Saturn as slowing things down at all it's about you having to redirect this energy to find a way of learning that's going to work for you so for example um dyslexia i watched a documentary of this lady she's an actress and she suffers with dyslexia she really has a hard time remembering her lines and reading her lines and they, they ran a few tests on her to check you know what sort of background can you read on and obviously everything is printed it's black ink on white paper and sometimes even for myself when i'm reading and i'm looking through and what I'm reading, what's being said, but something may say the cat has big feet, right? I might read the kitten has big feet, even though it clearly says cat. Why did I read kitten? Um, but that can be linked to dyslexia as well. But they printed out her script on a green sheet of paper. So it was black ink on green sheet of paper. And she was able to read it with ease. And I saw that and I was like, wow, like that's really impressive that sometimes it can be as simple as just changing the background colour to really process information. Because sometimes when Saturn sits here, this is the house of, you know, your early learning um, and also to apply yourself to these things. And there can just be a feeling of, damn, I'm not at the same pace as everyone else. What's wrong with me? Nothing's wrong with you. Nothing's wrong with you. But I think when, especially those of you who have children, because I noticed that, you know, people will comment who have kids and they get worried. I'm like, don't be worried, it's fine. There's ways around it. And it's just about learning to structure different ways to make your child feel more comfortable and more at ease. Try printing it on a different color paper. That might really work for them when it comes to reading and processing information. That's just something that I saw on a documentary one time. I want to talk about bullying as well. I noticed that bullying can play a factor when Saturn's placed here, particularly when Saturn is squaring something that is in the 12th house. When I say bullying, I'm talking about like, you know, in school, um, primary school, like early years, not necessarily secondary school, but it can happen. But um, there can be bullying that this person experiences and that can be enough to really put this person in um, a place of depression. I do look at depression coming through the third house as well as it coming from like the moon or the 12th house because the third house is the house of how you process information and sometimes people struggle and it can lead to you know depression and obviously if you are experiencing very challenging times in school this is also going to be hard for you you know um and it can just make your everyday just feel so over fucking whelming oh my god even in terms of how you receive information it can make you a little bit a little bit narrow-minded it can feel like a little bit narrow-minded I'm not going to sit here and say you guys don't process things properly, but I will say there can be a very one lane view of, um, it's actually quite similar to having Saturn in the ninth house because this is very much how I was as well. I'm very like straight to the point and very particular about who and where you're getting your information from. And sometimes it's very good at shutting people down because when you talk to other people, other people kind of help you generate ideas and opinions. And sometimes Saturn is very good at just, I don't wanna, I'm not open to taking in any information from outside of myself, because it just shuts down that ability to communicate. Now I wanna talk a little bit about ideas, okay? And it's gonna be very relatable to Saturn in Gemini, okay? Ideas. You guys have to learn to be a lot more open to ideas. Because where I associate depression coming into play is this feeling of, you know what, I don't really think I want to try anything. 
This is the house of Gemini people. Gemini is about curiosity, you know, being mentally stimulated, trying out new things. And if you're not putting yourself in a position to try these new things, then essentially you're never going to have a mental, your, your brain will never, your brain will never really be mentally stimulated. That's what I was saying before, right? When you speak to different people, like you can speak to someone who's got their own business and then speak to someone who's a big creative, for example. Oh, you know, I like to do nails and manicures. And I, I built my own business and my own brand. And oh, I like to do this for a living or I do this for fun or a hobby and da da da. Like all of that, wow. Like when I speak to people, I feel inspired by how far they've gone with their business or, you know, how much they're interested in this new hobby that they have. Like I really like talking to people because it reminds me, it's like a reflection of, am I doing enough? Should I do some more? Or, oh, I might try that. It's supposed to inspire you to want to do more. But again, sat in here, it doesn't always like to engage in conversation unless it's very serious, but also it doesn't feel inspired by others. You may not be someone who has a hobby. Like my, I can't even lie, this is my work, right? But I look at it as my hobby. I enjoy it so much. And I was doing it for free for a very long time. That's how much I enjoyed it. But you guys who have sat in place in this house, it's almost like I don't know what I'm supposed to do. There can be a lot of insecurities, you know, surrounding, well, am I good enough? Like you could be someone who is absolutely amazing at drawing, amazing at writing, you know, amazing at um, grammar, because... <laughs> You guys are the grammar police, yeah? Like, people like me, I deal with issues with communicating as it is. I don't use the right words, I don't write properly either, and I'm okay with that, because that's just how I am. But you guys may say, no, that's not the right word, or you shouldn't say that, or you shouldn't pronounce it that way. Okay, fine. But these are things that you are good at, and it's okay to admit, yep, I'm great at this. It's okay to admit I'm dope at these things. But it's also great to use those things and turn it into an interest. If you like grammar, then why not create a hobby where you look for grammar mistakes in books? Sounds so boring, right? But trust me, there is a community for it. Because even for myself, right? Whenever I see a mistake, I'm like, oh, I can't believe there's a mistake in that book. Oh my God, I get excited. There's no one to tell really. But imagine for those people who take that stuff very seriously. I'm pretty sure there's a community for people like that. There's a community for all types of people. But that's what I think you guys should do is really look for a community who you can talk to about the things that you are interested in and get out of this, I'm not good at this, or I'm not good. Everyone has something like that, that they're good at. And even if it's something that's so minor, like checking grammar, trust and believe, there is a community who's looking for someone like you to join. Trust it. When it comes to their conversation techniques, they're not the first people to just jump, you know, into a conversation. But these people may sit back and do a lot more observing and listening to see if there's even a point in engaging, you know, in this conversation. And these people are very easily exhausted and tired of hearing the same conversation go over and over and over again. These people need to be a part of a conversation where they feel personally included, where they personally have an opinion, where they are being asked personal questions. And Let's talk a little bit about um, transit and Saturn return. Now, um, when you have Saturn transiting, or even returning into your third house, and those of you who have not seen, I have made a whole Saturn return video. Please check out my, my Saturn series, and I will try and link it above here. If you guys are interested in learning a little bit more about Saturn returns. This will also be relatable to people who have solar return Saturn in their third house. And I actually have this right now, and it has literally been very, very overwhelming. So Saturn transit, Saturn return, even solar returns. When you have it in this third house, you will, trust me, you will feel it. And I'm just someone who is a Gemini rising. I'm very busy with my life and I like to have my mind constantly stimulated. But the, tr the challenging side to this that I've faced this year 
is I don't want to apply myself to anything like to anything it's been so challenging for me because you just feel like I can't not like I can't be bothered but mentally my mind's not a hundred percent and sometimes this is where we see people who end up experiencing um, depression you know when Saturn comes into this house you experience sadness depression because your mind is just not functioning how it normally is and there are a lot of things that go wrong <sighs> a lot of things that go wrong think about this house as daily commutes you know you walking through your neighborhood you know you riding your bike it's daily commutes and the frustrating thing about this is that where you may have always driven all of your life there's going to be some sort of changes so in the uk particularly in london the council the government the borough have put in these new things called ltns they are low neighborhood traffic they're these little plant pot things and they put it in the road so you can't drive through that road and this actually started last year right and it really annoyed everybody like people were getting fined getting ticketed for going through a road like to literally go if your house is there you gotta go to the main road all the way back around to get to the part that you need to get to so they've made it so it's a lot more challenging <laughs> just to commute through london like i was going to the gym last year which is normally a 12 minute drive it went from 12 minutes to 30 minutes because now everyone is banished to the main road and there is there was a lot more traffic so think about your Saturn returning or your Saturn transiting that third house you're going to experience a lot more traffic or a lot more issues doing the little things that you were doing before and even in terms of like um your car there are car problems oh my gosh because this is a mercurial house um i do find that when saturn comes in here some people buy a car some people are put into positions where um they pretty much have to fix the things on their car or there's going to be car accidents car problems being involved in a car accident even but there's something to do with cars being a problem sometimes you might even face having to go to court right because saturn is also the judge so there could be some sort of authoritative you know figures you know government coming down on you based on how you drove you know maybe you've got to put out an insurance claim if there's aspects to the eighth house even um there's going to be something going on in terms of car and motoring issues when saturn sits here natally we see someone who may have an issue driving may have car problems or may take extremely long to pass their driving test having to take your theory like you know 10 times you know having to take your practical like five times a lot of money being spent on trying to get your driver's license it may just take you a little bit longer your friends could be driving but it may take you an extra five ten years to get a license it just takes a little bit longer oh my gosh communication this is something that really that a lot of people struggle with you know with your Saturn return here um communication with your Saturn return here and transit it just feels overwhelming to want to communicate it's like you know what if i'm not going to be heard what's the point what's the point in talking what's the point in expressing my thoughts or my suggestions or my ideas if it's never going to be received what is the point so that's why a lot of the time you know we who have sat in here it may just mean you've got to work a little bit harder you know to communicate your thoughts or your ideas to get people to really hear you out and let's not forget your siblings a lot of people fall out with siblings during this time especially if it's a transit if you have sat in transit in your third house this is where we see your sibling going through their sat in return or you and them falling out so badly that it creates this distance and this wedge between you that lasts for years and i always say with you being the satin person you have to really try and make amends with your sibling obviously it just depends on the situation because obviously some stuff is unforgivable right but um it's important that you are really trying to make amends and you are trying to move forward with people 
I would probably use this time if you were having a really hard time communicating your thoughts, your ideas, or to just communicate in general to people, start writing things down. You know, start journaling, having a diary and talking to the diary as though it's a person. So it just gives you an outlet because a lot of the time, the transit, the Saturn return, it makes you feel so mentally blocked and it stops you. It just stops you from feeling motivated to try new things, to apply yourself to these things, to keep your brain going. So again, I don't look at Saturn being in this house as being terrible or the worst placement for Saturn to be. There are more challenging places, but the feeling just makes you feel very blocked and overwhelmed. And what you have to work on in this house is taking your time to mature through it. There's no pressure. And I feel like a lot of people that have this placement always feel a lot of pressure to keep up with their peers. Um, have a lot of pressure to achieve things and to have these ideas, these business plans, these structures, this, this and this, that and this. Like you haven't got to be like everybody else, but you do need to work on applying yourself to do better, to do more things. All right, people, I'm out. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. I hope to see you guys very soon and I wish you all the best. Take care.